This week on Mountain Bike Chronicles, we head to Mont Saint Anne, Quebec for the fourth World Cup of the season. And we join the Athertons during their week off between races. All this and more coming up on Mountain Bike Chronicles. With races happening nearly every weekend, World Cup downhillers spend a lot of time on the road. We join the Athertons midweek between races. Fourth of July. This family is one of the most prolific in racing. They train, race, and travel together. I'm gonna get a photo of myself to send to my girlfriend. I do not look good. In 2008, the family all wanted the same race. G and Rachel won the downhill, and Dan won the four cross. How are we? A pickle. <laughs> in a plastic bag. <laughs> what do you think? I can pull that off. You reckon? <laughs> Mont Saint Anne. Conditions are not ideal in Quebec this weekend. It's foggy, wet, and slippery on the track. While the weather is sour, Competition has been heating up between three riders this season. G. Atherton, Aaron Gwynn, and Greg Menar. There's quite a fine line in a lot of those tra in a lot of the turns, and they've blown out quite a lot, so I'm gonna have to keep it kind of precise. Some young guns have managed to make an impact on the standings. One of them being Menard's teammate, Josh Bryceland. It's full on, full on track, but um, ready for it, it's good. After qualifying, it's up in the air who will take the win this weekend. What's up? Just get in the spirit of things. <laughs> Arriving on July 4th, America's Independence Day, the Athertons roll into the U.S. for their next competition. They recharge at a restaurant and set out for a hotel and a good night's sleep. But with the American pride in full bore, they can't resist the celebrations down the street. <laughs> Some cool fireworks. It's race day in Mont Saint Anne, and the weather has cleared up. Brooke McDonald is up first. He's 19 years old, and he's had strong finishes at the last two races. He takes the lead by over five seconds. 
Meanwhile, Josh Bryceland is on course. McDonald watches as Bryceland tears up his time. He crosses the finish line and takes the lead by five hundredths of a second. He can't celebrate yet though, as the top three riders remain. Meanwhile on the west coast of Canada in Whistler, BC, the Red Bull Joyride course is beginning to be constructed. Course builder Patty Kay is one of the sport's top builders, and with only a couple weeks until the Red Bull Joyride, the task ahead is not an easy one. I am working seven days a week. I have three different crews going. Uh, basically, there's 12 guys here on site. Um, we've got six machines. Behind us here, uh, the course is coming together. We've got all our wood ramps ready to be installed. It's kind of like a big puzzle, and um, the pieces are now sitting and ready to just be positioned in the right place. Rider feedback is vital to the course's design. I, uh, I'm more of a builder and an operator than, I guess, the kind of biker that hits these things. I definitely ride a bike, but I don't do 40-foot gaps. So for me to put these courses together, I need oh, yeah. athlete input. 50 feet straight ahead. Yeah. Like that rock yeah, at the highest point. Exactly, straight off. Points that the riders wanted were bigger jumps. I had a different radius ramp there, and I'm like, no, this is crazy. I want to put a mellower radius so that yeah, you so can just float yeah, it, you know? Yeah. It's big hits, but everything is built as safe as possible. The features have come a long way since Patty built the first slope style course in Whistler and the resources required have dramatically increased. It takes a substantial amount of material to, to build this course. We're trucking in about uh, 150 truckloads, stump trucks of local material. Um, as far as wood, uh, everything is being rebuilt from scratch. It's all new material. Uh, it's substantial, the, the amount. You'd probably build a house with the material we have here. Like any artist, the feeling of satisfaction comes with watching your art be enjoyed. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Look who we're waiting oh, for. Man. Crocodile Dundee over there. <laughs> I got me a hat. I got me some jerky. Wishing me luck. Boom. Getting wild. Getting some wave runners. Stevie Bell's mine too. Getting in the boat with Reg. Let's get a water. Being professional thrill seekers, even an Atherton day of relaxation is fueled with adrenaline. Five miles an hour. Good day, good day. Good. We'll knock her up a bit to 11. Knock her up a bit. Stevie's doing a thrill, but I can't do both things at once. How's my hair? Oh, there they are! Any sharks or fish or anything. I love America. I love jerky. I love speedboats. I think Stevie's uh, really a natural at the boat, boat thing. He looks like a millionaire. <laughs> that was exciting. <laughs> I wish mountain biking can, like, had boats in it somehow. With a day of fun behind them, they'll have to get down to business and prepare for the next race. I like lakes. Steve, you like lakes? You're all right, <laughs> Back in Mont Saint Anne, the top three riders are left Atherton, Menar, and Gwyn. Atherton is up first. He starts off strong, but gets a flat tire halfway down the course. A devastating result, as he can't finish his run and will not get any points towards the overall championship. It's like the worst thing that could have happened for the overall title, you know. The current overall leader is next, Aaron Gwynn.
He takes the lead from Bryceland by 0.46 seconds. One rider remains, the fastest qualifier, Greg Minar. As he heads into the rock section, he loses control and goes down. He can't make up the lost time after the crash and won't be on the podium this weekend. Quinn takes the win with Josh Bryceland in second and Brooke McDonald in third. After Mont Saint Anne, Aaron Gwynn is 173 points ahead of Greg Menard, and G. Atherton is not far behind in third place. Next time on Mountain Bike Chronicles, we head to Wyndham, New York for the next World Cup race and hook up with 17-year-old newcomer Troy Brosnan. And we join Kurt Sorge and his photographer Ralphie as they head out on a shoot to capture some awe-inspiring images.